Welcome back to our Lenten devotional series. Uh, This is the concluding episode. This coming Sunday will be Easter. And in church, you are going to hear one of the great resurrection passages read. I want to share this one from the 28th chapter of Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. An angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow, for fear of him. The guards shook and became like dead men. In other words, they they passed out. They fainted from fear. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. Four very important words. He is not here where you have come looking for him. For he has been raised, as he said, Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead and indeed is going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will find him. This is my message for you, said the angel. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. And as they ran, suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshiped him. And Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers. And this is the same message the angel had just imparted. Go and tell the disciples to go to Galilee and there they will see me. In two of the four gospels, Jesus doesn't show up uh, beside the empty tomb at all. In two others, he makes a very brief appearance. In Matthew's gospel, he shows up somewhere in the garden, but they've already left the tomb. They're on their way to find the disciples, and they meet him on the road. The angel says to them, and Jesus says to them, Tell my disciples to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. To find the resurrected Savior does not mean apparently to linger beside an empty tomb, thinking only about the gift of life beyond this life. That is an important and a powerful message, and we can't miss it, nor would we want to, but it's not the only message. In fact, it seems not even the primary one. Jesus says, tell the disciples to go to Galilee. They're looking for the risen me, the risen Messiah, the resurrected Savior. Don't come to an empty tomb. Go back into the world where I am. Go back where people are hungry and hurting and homeless. Go back among the lepers and the poor and those who have been pushed aside, left out and left behind. Go back to where the broken need to be made whole and the unhealthy need to be healed and the sinners need to be forgiven. Go where the masses suffer and there you will see me in the midst of them. Doing what I always did. Feeding and healing and forgiving and loving. Helping those who cannot help themselves. That's where we see the risen Savior. I see him whenever I look at the projects you do, Uh, the Hospitality House, the Health and Hunger Coalition, the Children's Council, the Habitat House that you're building this season. When I see you in Galilee, out there doing the things that Jesus did in his name for the love of people, helping those who cannot help themselves, that's where I witness the resurrection. A friend of mine from Asheville is named Rick. He and I are similar ages. He was in Winston-Salem recently, and we met at Starbucks for coffee. While we were there, he told me the story of a man that he knew. Uh, When he knew him, he was a, a retired minister well into his 90s. He had been a youth during the Great Depression. And he told Rick the story of a man named Foster. Foster was an older gentleman, uh, very poor, 
uh, did not have full-time employment. He said Foster was always grinning, which revealed the fact that he was missing a few teeth. Stubbly, disheveled, but wherever there was need in the community, Foster was always there. Wherever there had been a tragedy, wherever a home had burned or been damaged by a storm, wherever there was need and you could contribute, you could pitch in, you could volunteer, he said you knew in that little mountain community way up in southwest North Carolina, you knew Foster would show up. He always showed up, the man told my friend Rick. He always showed up when people were hurting. He always showed up when people had fallen and needed a hand to lift them. He always showed up even if nobody else did. You could count on Foster. When I was a boy, he said, I learned Foster's story. I kept hearing about all that he did. I kept witnessing it. And one day I was somewhere that there had been a problem and there was this old guy working quietly, doing his best to help those who needed to be helped. And I walked over and said, are you Mr. Foster? And he grinned at me and rubbed my head. He said, probably the nicest thing anybody's called me in a while. And I said, you're here to help folks? And he said, we're all here to help folks. That man told my friend Rick, I remember as a child looking at him and thinking, I Believe, I am seeing for the first time the face of Jesus. Maybe he was. Maybe that's how you and I experience resurrection ultimately. Is by going to Galilee where people hurt and cannot help themselves and doing what we can to lift the fallen And in that process, the resurrected one stands in our midst. Do not be afraid, Jesus said to the Marys. Instead, go to the disciples and tell them, go to Galilee. There you will see me living the life of love for those who need it. Paige joins me in wishing you a very, Happy Easter.